Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to a, another book study, Star Wars EU book study. Tonight we're starting the Dawn of the Jedi, uh, Star Wars Dawn of the Jedi Into the Void. Let me mute myself here. I, uh, I will tell you up front, we'll see. It, it, we're planning on getting through chapters one through three. I don't think that'll be a problem. But uh, you might hear it a little bit in my voice. The whole <laughs> we, we've uh, we've been pretty sick lately, and I'm pretty sure it was probably a strain of COVID or another. I thought it was just flu at the first. I got it first. Sound Engraver has it. Um, I'm mostly over it, no fevers or anything like that. But I've still got all this head congestion, and I completely have 100% lost my ability to taste or smell anything, which makes me think it's probably COVID, right? Because I've had colds before where you, you know, your taste buds are a little altered or a little off or something like that. This is weird. It's like, I, I smell nothing. I taste nothing. Like I could, I could actually probably eat an onion, even if the texture didn't rep, rep, uh, repulse me, which it probably would, but like that's how bad it is. So you take away my taste buds. We're, we're right up there with my will to live at that point, you know, <laughs> but uh, my throat is, um, my, my, my voice comes and goes right now. It seems to be doing pretty well. And I've got some some liquid here to keep drinking and everything. So we'll see how we go, see how we can get through all of the three chapters. It might, you know, end up that we have to call it a little early or something like that, but uh, hopefully not. But let me go ahead and welcome my uh, my co-host for these book studies, Mr. Big Al Baca. Welcome, sir. Hello. How are you? Better than you, it sounds. <laughs> I didn't know, I didn't know you were sick. I'm I'm very sorry. Well, it's you know, I just never get it's I don't think maybe maybe once or twice in my life have I been so sick where I'm just like laid up and I can't do anything, mm. right? Um so even with COVID, this is this would be the second time I've gotten a COVID strain if it is a COVID strain. Um because I'm not going to go get tested and be on the government's books or anything like that. <laughs> but uh even in both of those, it's like, you know, it's kind of rough, you know, for a day or so, but then I'm just, I'm fine. Now, poor sound engraver, she's been, she's been holed up in, in her apartment for like three days now. She can't do anything. She's had to, um, oh, had to okay. cancel work and everything, but uh, she's just, she's feeling a little bit better today. So feel, feel better, sound engraver. Yeah. She's here in the chat. So, uh, yeah. No, I, well, I've had my, my <clears throat> issues as well. Not, not, uh, not illness related. Sick, but, uh, I had the, uh, well, I was supposed to have that thing next Tuesday mm -hmm. that had to be canceled because I need to get a cardiac clearance. You can just say it. It's not like a bad word or something. Colonoscopy. <laughs> there you go. So I have to get a cardiac clearance, but I can't do that until I <clears throat> get to a um, heart doctor until Friday. So that's still hanging over my head. And then, of course, this week, I get a wonderful little note. Jury duty. Jury duty? <laughs> that's not going to work for you. No, it's not. And I <clears throat> basically told him that in my little letter and my doctor note that I sent mm -hmm. today. Yeah. But it just proves one thing. There's more than one person that's getting up my ass. So... <laughs> oh boy <laughs> but you know <laughs> yes i planned that joke for like a week but yes then it's 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 just i'm like come on you know <laughs> i it, you know i just want to get it over with and the one thing and then that was hanging over me at least i got my other thing issue figured out the yeah thing, yeah so yeah. but uh otherwise everything you know Everything's well, pretty much going on. Got a uh, new review that just uh, debuted earlier today, which uh, Gran Turismo. Okay. Yeah, and uh, they'll probably won, if not later today, tomorrow, of uh, a certain uh, cerulean colored bug movie that's out that I don't know if you care about or not, but. <laughs> really covered book no what is this blue beetle 
Oh, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> Cerulean it, blue. <laughs> that is 100% grounded in the Snyderverse. The directors have said, no, we are Snyderverse all the way. They're even trying to get Cavill back for like a sequel or something. So, yeah, I, I couldn't give a crap about that. Yeah. Yeah, you'll you'll find out when I tell you. I just finished watching it. <clears throat> okay. Half hour ago. Um. And I've I've got uh, uh, tomorrow. I'll be doing a live stream talking about Nefarious. I finally watched that movie, and oh man, it, wow, wow. We'll talk about that tomorrow. It's still like blowing my mind, but uh, good stuff. What, what Blue Beetle? No, Nefarious. Oh, Blue Nefarious. Beetle. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Blue Beetle, blow my mind, guys. I'm sorry. I, I like was reading. I was reading the chat, and I didn't hear you say nefarious. <laughs> yes, nefarious. Excellent film. People yeah. will see it. So let's turn our attention then to Dawn of the Jedi. If you mm -hmm. if you did if you're tuning in for the first time tonight and you missed last week, you know we were supposed to start the study last week, but instead we did a little uh, background. We talked about sort of a prologue, sort of an issue zero. Of the comics that you know, there's a set of three part com uh, graphic novels that are really good they come after the novel but there's a little prologue to it that sets up the whole history of even this novel and and what where we're where we are what's coming around so if you get lost a little bit in the uh you know, history or, or culture that we're talking about you can go check that video out we explain everything there we do finally as we open up this book we meet uh immediately we meet lannery and uh, well, actually, it's a flashback that we open up on. So Lannery is our main character, and she is a Jedi Ranger. Now, remember, we don't have Jedi at this point. We have Jedi, which is a Dibendu word, meaning mystic center. <clears throat> mystic center. Oh, Daniel Heron said, open the box. <laughs> Daniel Heron got me this birthday present I was supposed to open. We'll, we'll do that at the end, Daniel. We'll do that at the end here. Uh, don't worry, I will, we will not end the stream without opening the box. Don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> <so. laughs> don't worry, I, I want to find out what's in it to be honest. So, <laughs> oh, I know what's in it, <laughs> yeah. Al apparently knows, but uh, thank you, sir. Um, so yeah, th these are Jedi, and this is the precursors to the Jedi as we know them. Jedi means mystic center, and they are on this planet Tython, which is the they believe in a balance of light and dark. They have these two moons of Tyf uh, Tython, I Ashlar and Bogan, and they, they one's light and one's dark, and they see that as the dark and light side. In Darth Plagueis, we referenced this back, we referenced Ashlar and Bogan and so forth, and you know, Plagueis talks about the history of it. So a Jedi is, is trying to strive for balance, which is closer to what we would understand is the light side of the force than you might think, you know, in like prequel and original trilogy era. Uh, it is a little different. You know, the Jedi Council and whatnot had gotten a little complacent, a little too mired in some rules and stuff like that. But it's still uh, the balance is more it's it's more light side than you would think. It's not like, OK, so take Yoda and Darth Vader and mix them together. And that's a balance. No, that is not <laughs> that is not a balance. So uh, just to you know, curve that thinking there. Well, I think well, I, I think it's the nature of the universe to to want light mm -hmm. yeah. uh, more so than darkness. But you, I mean, but you will need the darkness. Well, darkness is the absence of light. Right. And I think when, you know, what we say is dark side or what the Jedi here mean is dark side isn't giving into your anger and ripping somebody to shreds. It's acknowledging and expressing your emotions. It's kind of what we would call, uh, uh, developing the shadow self or something like that don't deny it or it'll conquer you it'll overtake you right give it a job I accept it integrate it in a healthy manner you know that's the idea so we um start out with this flashback <clears throat> lannery our main character her and her brother when they were children she grew up um uh, both of her parents were jedi at the different academies there on tython and we meet her and her brother her younger brother was very resistant to the force <clears throat> to the point where he hated, we, we, we'll have this, um, mm -hmm. even in this flashback here, Lannery, which I think is such a, such a womanly trait. 
And if you're a Jedi woman, then it just makes sense. And Glannery's always doing this. She just she thinks nothing of invading people's privacy and reaching out and trying to touch their mind and trying to see what they're thinking or what they're feeling. You know, um, that's such a woman thing to do. Not every single woman, of course, but women in general. Your average woman's going to be more emotionally aware or emotionally in tune than your average male. And uh, and always curious, always wanting to find out. So you can imagine, you know, give a woman the sense of. Um, you know, being able to touch somebody's mind or sort of peer in a little bit. And there's, there's no self-control there. <laughs> and we don't see that with Landry. Landry's constantly, and Dale hates it. The second the Dale senses her in his mind, get out. The opinions of Professor Geek do not reflect everyone on the stream. <laughs> hey, I didn't say all women are all men, but men and women are different. And uh, well, women <laughs> are a little more emotionally attuned in general. There are exceptions, you know, uh, on either side, but... I, I just think that it's that I think Landry's I was, I was sitting there like oh he's going down a road, he's going down a path here. You might want to back off a little bit. Yeah. I'm my channel's far beyond backing up. <laughs> yeah. But uh but yeah, I mean, but La La I mean Landry is a well written very, character. Yeah, and you I mean you immediately you kind of like her. Uh and she she cares. Mm-hmm. Or you know the young you know her you know her young self she her and her brother and of course we do we are going to find out that you know things the things that that do happen but yeah. she you know she's like very protective like you know like you like you said you know she uh, she wants to know what's wrong and yeah. try to fix it. Um. Darth Enigma uh, has a good way of stating the light and dark thing. Um, you know, he's talking about like in Western thought, you know, light is good, dark is, is bad. They're good and evil representations. But in East, in the East or Eastern thought, uh, such as Taoism and so forth, light and dark are separate from good and evil. And that's a little bit more of the thinking here in this era of the Jedi. You know, it's a little bit more of the thinking here where light and dark aren't necessarily good and evil, so to speak, but different uh, aspects of the force. So, um, yeah, as, as Al said, we meet, uh, this is a flashback, and then we, we meet Lannery as a grown-up when she's uh, awake. So she's, she was having a dream. <clears throat> she wakes up, and we find out that she is a ranger. Now, I think I mentioned the different roles that the Jedi could play. They were uh, younglings, um, journeymen, I think, or journeyers, they're called, uh, who are the journeyers to the temple still training. There's the rangers who are out there taking Jedi law, Jedi uh, help, Jedi sentiment and everything to the surrounding planets. And then there's the masters back home in the temples, the masters. So Lannery is a ranger. We learn a little bit about her. What is all that dinging and clicking and beeping there, Al? <laughs> it's um, someone who rarely shows up in a certain chat, but now he wants to talk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yep, yep. There he is. <laughs> um, Back there, so we we find out a little bit about her. So, she, um, go ahead. So would you equate a ranger? I mean, I know it's using the more notable terms that we uh that we're already aware of, but they are more like the knight, they're like the ones that they're out doing, yeah, yeah, stuff out, yeah. out, out in the universe, mm -hmm. whereas the masters are the ones who are kind of like the teachers, still, yeah, exactly, the, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but with, with the ranger, there's the added aspect to where they're really going out far into the um, unknown areas of this little system. Because see, our Jedi here in this little system around Titan, they're not they're not able to access a, a galaxy as large as we're used to in the Star Wars universe in general. We do have um, <clears throat> like Calamar and, and different places like that, but they they used um, those though yours to get to Titan. And they don't have a hypergate. They don't have the ship capacity to go back to um, Kashyyyk and, uh, you know, um, the Toilet Comb world and so forth and all these kind of places. Um, so so ba basically, is everyone who is there, because we know there are different races there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So is everyone who is there, they, they've they been there for their generational. Yeah. No one yeah. who shows up. No. Okay, it's just about yeah. just making sure. Yeah, the the though you are brought them there, and then that's where they just started growing. Yeah, and they, and they are just they've been breeding and yeah, multiplying and everything else. Now we find out about Lannery. She likes to keep to herself. She likes the life of a ranger because she likes to just be totally by herself. She has uh, adjusted this ship called a peacekeeper 
to her own specification. What's that? Alyssa will be talking every now and then. Uh, get the what? Okay, hang on a second. I got to go see to her real quick. But um, she likes to be alone. Maybe you can talk a little bit about her ship there. I'll, I'll be right back. Yeah, she's um, got the ship. It's called a Peacekeeper. Was it Peacekeeper? But she is tweaked it to her own specifications. And she also has Iron Holds, who is her droid, who she's also kind of uh, uh, customized. But um, but yeah, her, her ship, she says she's further customized heavy armor, doubling its weight, but making it more useful in risky scenarios. Which, uh, you, you know, she's she's done that to uh, her, her droid. Yeah, I guess it's... She wants something to rely on, so just, it's not going to blow apart on her. Also, and like most rangers, she has made modifications, adaptations to her ship, stamped her own identity on it, stripped out tables and chairs, and replaced it with weights and tension rack for working out. She, she, I get, I guess she, she is probably very well suited for the job of a ranger, just being out in the system by herself, except for her droid doing whatever she needs to do because she, she is a learner. And when I was re when I was first getting that first person, I thought it was professor geek, at least in the old days, <clears throat> kind, of likes to keep to him, kind of likes to keep to himself. Oh yeah. <laughs> the loner. He doesn't like people, you know? Yep. 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 <laughs> yeah. Like uh, I said, I, and her, you know, I was talking about the droid. This is kind of, you know, Iron it's Hulk like the snap. ship, just like the ship. She's she's tricked out this, uh, mm -hmm. um, the droid too to this. And we we know that there is something in her past that kind of made her like this, and it has to do with her brother. And we don't right. quite, quite know what that is yet. I, I, I want, yeah, I wanted, I was I was going to touch on that, but I was like, I don't know if I want to. I don't think we should talk about that. Yet. Yeah, that yeah. exactly been brought up. We do find um, she's on her way back to Tython. She's been recalled. You know, she has these missions in, in the different places. She's been recalled for some special mission. And she gets a transmission from Master Dan Powell, who is a, a, a Dai Bendu Jedi Master. And uh, she's talking to her. She says, um, it was more of... Uh, she was a master at Anil Kesh, the Jedi Temple of Science. And during Lannery's training there, she and Dan Pal had formed a close bond. It was uh, she more than any other who had expressed the conviction that Lannery would be a great Jedi one day. It was also Dan Pal who had revealed the incur and encouraged the areas of the Force use at which Lannery was most skilled. Metallurgy. Elemental manipulation. Alchemy. And then we find out that there's this experiment. We'll find out a little bit more about it later. That Lannery has in her peacekeeper there kind of under wraps and it's this alchemical experiment through the force and whatnot that Dan Powell has kind of schooled her in but we also find out that it's teetering on ethics a little bit like Jedi might not be okay with this you know it's yeah like, there's, there's some yeah there's some uh and it's not the first it's not gonna be the first instance that we find out that you know tinkering tinkering uh with the uh with alchemy is going to be a bit uh problematic well, there yeah problematic is a good word it says here there was a hidden place in her peacemaker ship in a container holding a very personal experiment and sometimes she spent long hours at work there her alchemical skills still seemed fledgling sometimes but the sense of accomplishment and power she felt while using them were almost addictive well that sounds a lot like dark side right to us yeah <laughs> What's she making in that little uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, container? We learn about her sword as well. She uh, They don't have lightsabers at this point. Okay, just a second. Let me finish here and I will, okay? Um, she's a talented Jedi Master. Uh, master Team, my dog said. I can sense your experience and strength through the years. It was a Durasteel sword forged by this Master's weaponsmith that hung by Lannery's side. 
So this Durasteel, uh, we'll learn a little bit more about it later. Perfectly honed, perfectly balanced and whatnot. So like a steel blade. No, it's pretty much a viral blade. That's pretty much what we see on the cover, right? Yeah, yeah, that's her. That's her sword. Yeah, exactly. Does it does it have that little extra blade there at the on the pommel? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Frighteningly dangerous. A little bit. Yeah. A little <laughs> bit. A little bit. Um, she's called to all of the Jedi. There, she she um she enters into a council of them all, and. She says, I honor the force as well as I can. She said, I am the mystery of darkness in balance with chaos and harmony. And that's part of their yeah, Jedi code. Mm -hmm. You have to wait, Alyssa. I'll be there later, okay? I'm on the radio right now. She calls it the radio. Um, mystery of darkness in balance with chaos and harmony. So it's a really it's a weird, interesting way of putting it. You know, it's very different than the Jedi code in Knights of the Old Republic, for example. You know, you got the mm -hmm. Sith code and Jedi code there. But um, yeah, it's, al it's almost it's almost Eastern, like that Eastern mm -hmm. wisdom kind of exactly, yeah, uh, way of speaking. You know, harmony with harmony <clears throat> with the universe. Uh, yeah, uh, if, if if they were if they were American in the sixties, you'd call them a hippie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> well, hippie dippy. And again, she walks into all these Jedi masters. Some of them she knows, some of them she doesn't know, and then suddenly. She's like, well, I don't know these. Maybe I'll, it's forbidden, but maybe I'll just reach out and kind of touch their mind a little bit. And just sort of sense what they're thinking. Like, really? Come on. And and they immediately sense it and, and they censor her for it. Like, stop just invading like, people's privacies. You know? Just like a woman, right, Professor? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I stand by that. And I think women in the chat would understand and probably agree with me. Even if they don't themselves do it, women would be way more likely to invade somebody's mind than a man would. Not because men are more moral or anything, just because men wouldn't think to do it. Men would just be like, well, whatever, you're smiling. That means you're happy. I don't need to peek into your mind. You know, <laughs> where women would be like, why is he smiling? You know? <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> um, I like that there's a Wookiee among them. Mm -hmm, yeah, there's a Wookiee master there. So we find out that she's... Oh, Daddy, oh my gosh. Hang on. She's not going to let up until I go take a stupid picture of her. <laughs> I'll be right well folks i hope everybody is having a lovely friday let's um you know see what everybody anybody got anything they want to talk about in the chat there let me know uh like i said i've got to uh let's talk about talk about my channel big al presents if you guys haven't uh subscribed i really hope you do so got some reviews up grand turismo with that blue beetle up uh, Jules, if you want a cute little sci fi film, folks, it's kind of like ET for the elderly. It's called Jules, starring Ben Kingsley. Highly recommend. Uh, so that that's a cute, cute little film. I, I think there, I think a lot of people would like. And the professor tomorrow night is going to be talking about a film called Nefarious, which he finally got around to seeing. Uh, I gave it three and a half. I probably underrated it a little bit, um, a few few things, but fantastic performance by Sean Patrick Flannery. Uh, oh, just, uh, yeah. Giving you a preview of what you're going to talk about tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, what was that? I lost my page here. So we find out from these, there it goes, yeah. Um, Everything, we, uh, so th there's there's a problem happening, and they, she finds out why they brought her back. They could have brought other rangers who were closer to Tython. They brought her mm -hmm. back because there's a danger to Tython, to all of the you know people in the system right now, and it has to do with her brother. And she said, my brother's dead. My brother died when we were younger. And they said, no, we've got these, you know, rumors are persisting that your brother's behind it. Um, Dale. So the little boy that we saw in the flashback as a grown man now who she had thought was dead for so many years is behind this. He's trying to find a hypergate, which would actually let them let anybody leave the whole sector, you know, and get far away, you know, more as of a connected universe like we're used to with Star Wars. They say hypergate. That's a myth. There's no such thing as a hypergate. They say, yeah, we think so, too, except that he's trying to gather dark matter 
to power this hypergate. And whether the hypergate's possible or not, if he gathers enough of this dark matter, it could be a real danger to not only Titan but surrounding, you know, no. everything. And the hypergate <clears throat> has the, the was it the Thoyar? No, the Thoyar was those big uh pyramid things that brought them there. Yeah, but did they Oh, I thought they I thought it like opened up a, a hypergate or something to get to Titan. It yeah, it did, but it wasn't the hypergate itself. Okay, it's, it's okay. a separate thing. Just, yeah. Just checking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good point there. So um she's, you know, obviously uh, surprised by this. And uh the the mission first, the threat has um the threat that has risen against the Jedi and perhaps Titan itself. And when you know that, you will understand why we have chosen you. Of course, Lander, he said. I'm honored to be here and keen to hear. Any threat against Tython is great is a threat against everything I love. Everything we all love, La Mia said. <clears throat> For 10,000 years, we have studied the Force and developed our society around within it. Wars and conflicts have come and gone. We strive to keep the dark and the light, Bogan and Ashlar, forever in balance. But now, now there is something that might destroy us all. So she gets back on her ship as she's ready to leave. And then suddenly, actually on her way to the ship, these little uh, journeyers, Jedi journeyers, traveler learning students, basically, give her this recording that Master Dan Pal has given her, you know, her favorite, her, you know, kind of mentor said, uh, open this once you're on your ship alone. So Dan Pal wants to give her information that she didn't want the rest of the Jedi to know about. Mm -hmm. And when she, <clears throat> let me see here. Um, we do have a, a description of Lannery first before we get to that, what that information is. And maybe I'll do this and I'll show you this picture I want to show you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lannery wore loose trousers and wrapped shirt, shimmer silk jacket, leather boots, and equipment belt. Her flowing red scarves were from one of the finest clothing stores on Calamar. The silver bangles on her left wrist bore precious stones and the deep mines from the deep mines of Skagora, a gift from the Wookiee family she'd grown close to during her time there. Her sword was carried in a leather sheath fashioned from the bright green skin of a screech lizard from one of Orb Obri's three moons. Add these exotic adornments to her six-foot frame, startling gray eyes, and long flowing auburn hair clasped in a dozen metal clips, and she knew <coughs> she knew she cut an imposing figure. So that's the <clears throat> image we have over here. She, she said, I mean, she sounds like she cuts her, she does cut. A, a um impressive picture. I mean, it's big six foot. That's got to be. Uh, she's got to stand out. Mm -hmm. I'm sharing on the screen here. This is a. Um, I don't know if this is still going on. This is a fan kind of project that was done <clears throat> of some characters here. This Lannery as a child. Lannery as a, an adult. We have Tree Sana, who's the Twi'lek that we're going to meet in a few moments. <clears throat> and then we have Master Dan Powell. And then there's Dalian Brock Dale, who uh, is her brother. I don't know that I like... Um, I like her design. I think she needs to look taller. Um, and her hair is not really so much auburn right there. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit better in this other... Um, this other... Share it here. Whoops. There we go. This other image of her and Tree Sana. Again, we'll meet Trisana in a second. But um, I think her hair, it said Auburn, not brown. So I don't know what's going on there. But anyway, just kind of neat to put some of the images to us <clears throat> well, a little bit. Aub Auburn's kind of like, kind of like brown, but with reddish. Yeah, it's a little redder. Tinge. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. So I just wanted to share that. Now, on the ship, when she puts the recording from Dan Powell in there, what Dan Powell tells her about is this Twi'lek named Trisana. And he's a contact of hers. It's, we get the impression that it's kind of shady, like he's a contact that she doesn't want the other Jedi Masters to know about. We don't really know why yet. <clears throat> but she's to go to this one planet and meet him first because he has some information. He's um, the type, he, you know, she said he is dangerous, and he's the type that can kind of move into the underworld settings and stuff like that. He's not really Mr. Above the Board, but he's like an informant. You know, cops will have a, a criminal that's also their informant. You know, that's kind of the idea. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and that wraps up our chapter two. 
one. Oh, chapter one. I'm sorry. We're going into chapter two. Thank you. See how long I can get my voice to hold out here. <clears throat> we have a flashback in chapter two here. Again, we're going to see that the structure of the book is going to go from flashbacks when they were kids and, and our, our teenagers anyway, and then the, the current time. And this is important because the specific story arc that the flashbacks are going to take us through, we start that here in chapter two. Every youngling grows up uh, learning at one of the Jedi temples, but then when they become a Jedi journeyer, they have to go out and travel across Tython to these other Jedi temples, like the Temple of Science, the Temple of you know Combat, the Temple, you know, all these different places there, and learn their skills there. And it's a it's a kind of a pilgrimage or rite of passage because Tython is a very dangerous planet. Remember, we talked about that before. You have to be force sensitive to really be able to to uh, survive there. Mm -hmm. So, but, uh, her, but, okay. da but Dale, he's not so sensitive, is he? Yeah, that's that's what we're getting to here. We've learned this about Dale in this moment. Dale doesn't he's he's closed off from the force. <clears throat> and you get the idea that. On the one hand, he doesn't have any natural affinity toward it. But you really don't know if he ever would because you start to get the impression that Dale is very resistant to the Force. In fact, resentful of the if, Force. I, I'm glad you said that because um, yeah, you noted it a little earlier because she would try to get into his mind, kind of read how, his feelings and all. Yeah. And he, he almost becomes belligerent mm -hmm. and i i hesitate to say violent mm -hmm. in his reaction yeah. to her doing that i told you not to go into my mind which is right. an invasion of privacy i mean it makes sense right yeah there's a there's a scene in knights of the old republic too and it makes a little more sense if you're playing uh as as mitra uh mira mitra surik the, the female but um her this woman Kraya, darth darth Kraya, really master Kraya, is trying to teach her to regain her force powers and she starts peeking into the minds of her ship crew and then she goes and talks to this uh atten rand this pilot um smuggler guy that she's met and he's always reciting pazak numbers card playing numbers uh hyperspace lanes spaceship parts he's always reciting it because he's blocking because he knows Anytime mm -hmm. he's near a Jedi, they're going to try and re read his mind. And she eventually, you know, apologizes to him for it. But <clears throat> it's a real, um, it's a real invasion of privacy. It's not something you should do. Uh, but also, it, but there's almost like he has a, a physical reaction. Well, he feels well. it, you know? Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's he feels anger. It, but, but, it is, but, you know, but it's almost, it, I was getting an impression. I, I don't know exactly the wording that, where or where he needed to find it, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it was almost like he was that it was painful to him almost on a physical level, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, or maybe, maybe I was just reading more into it, but uh, mm -hmm. he definitely does not like, appreciate, or want to deal with the force at all, yeah, yeah, no, not at all. Now we um and and his parents, you know, his mother pulls Lannery aside at first and said, "Look, when you're out there, you need to take care of your brother because he's he's not." And Lannery's completely as a young Lannery in the flashback, she's completely oblivious to this. No, it's fine, it's fine. He just needs you know some time. He'll 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 be fine. He'll be fine. It'll all be fine. Everything's fine. You know, <laughs> she's very much in denial about this as young Lannery. <clears throat> so what it's it's an interesting setup here though. Instead of in this book. <clears throat> instead of a star wars book about light side versus dark side or the sith versus the jedi you know jedi or whatever we have here the force versus no force or anti-force in general so it's not the dark and light side of the forces clashing here it's it's the people using the force and then people who don't use who, force. who don't want the force you know um it's it's just interesting it that kind now, of it, it, it doesn't say now Dale can use the force, he just chooses not to, right? We don't really know that right now, he's never That's really was, used it. Okay, <laughs> I, was, I was wondering because it, it does sound like this kind of planet where 
you pretty much <laughs> yeah, I mean, before, yeah, you pretty much need the force to to live. Yeah, remember that the uh, children of the Jedi who were born without being force sensitive had to leave on the planets. Right. It's just too difficult to live there. And we do. I mean, we see in the flashback through this chapter some of the um, trials that they face going out, you know, as, as journeyers already, the hook birds and everything that um, you kind of need the force to fight some of these beasts. There's also yeah, this like they're reptilian. They're nasty little suckers. Yeah. The hook birds, they sing to you and their song like sort of hypnotizes you <laughs> for them to get close to claw your eyes out and eat your flesh. <laughs> I was like going, oh my, well, that was, it's like, oh, it's a pretty songbird. Yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Um, then a little later, they, they meet these like reptilians that walk upright like men and, uh, will try to eat the, I think eat the marrow of their bones or something like that, or something like that from their spinal cord. I forget exactly what, yeah, but, so it's um, like spinal, spinal fluid, I think. spinal fluid that they'll feed on. Yeah. So it's a wicked place to live. And Landry saves him from the hook birds at the first time. And she starts to feel a little bit of pride over that. And she tries to save him from the reptilian too, except he saves her and she looks around and turns and he's got a blaster, like this old blaster that his uh, grandfather had given him or something like that. You know, look, look, and it's, it's, you can't help thinking uh, of Han Solo's words. Look, all your, your religion, whatever, but nothing's as good as a good blaster. Good blaster your side. at your side, kid. I, 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 <clears> remember, <throat> I remember thinking the same thing when I, when I read mm -hmm. that. <clears throat> so, when we jump to and when we stick around in our, our current plot, you know, contemporary time here, she's going to meet Trisana and uh, or tree, as you'll call him here. She meets him at this uh, cafe, this restaurant or whatnot. And Trisana is a really interesting character. He. Um, well, see, chapter two is pretty much the flashback. Yeah, um, from dealing with the birds. And the, yeah, yeah, dealing the with the birds. So in chapter nasty, three, nasty little bits. Mm -hmm. Chapter three, we go and we meet Trisana, and I don't have a lot of uh, like parts um, underlined to read, <clears throat> but you saw the image of Trisana there. He's a red Twi'lek with three leku, which makes him very rare. It's very, uh, uh, it's not common that you'd see a Twi'lek red anyway, but then also with three leku is quite a. Um, thing and he's he's typically used to looked at being looked at as a freak um you get the idea that he's kind of a uh had to pull himself up by his own bootstraps kind of like having to really um learn how to fend for himself which is why he's got all these underground connections and he's sort of a rogue you know and so forth and lannery keeps trying to read him she keeps trying to touch his mind but she gets nothing from him mm -hmm. And, of course, this bothers her because she thinks that she should be able to just peek into everybody's mind. And it's all fine. I'm a woman. I can do it. <laughs> 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 but she's having trouble. So eventually she asks him and he says, I've, I've been uh, altered. I've been closed off. And we find out that Master Dan Powell has, like using her force alchemy or whatever, has closed his brain off to where no one can get in. No one can. The force can't touch him and get in there. And. In, re in uh, return, she's going to, you know, she's promised him the money and whatnot. And he's basically working as her informant, working as her spy, working as these things. But because no one can look into his brain, he can never reveal that she's the one, you know, that he's working for. So it's, uh, we find that out. And he is kind of a tragic character because he does have a sense of uh, loneliness, maybe a little bit of a Napoleon complex, you know, not that he's short necessarily, but just in the idea that he's, um, wants respect but doesn't always get respect and whatnot from the world right. and so he's a, he's a fascinating character and really you, you come to even if you don't necessarily like him or, or know what he's going to be bad guy or good guy in the end he's he's uh he earns our interest and earns our little bit of empathy there yeah because once you once you feel once you you know learn he, he he's basically been an experiment mm -hmm. and <clears throat> molded to be exactly who he is and really probably had no choice in the matter. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, um, they talk about that. And then tree says, along with talk of your brother, I hear rumors of Gree technology, G R E E. And we find out about these Gree. These are some sort of mystic, mythical ancient beings that lived on these planets before, the Thoyor brought all these uh, beings there. 
We'll find out a little bit more about these later. But this GRI technology. Um, Landry inclined her head, raised an eyebrow. I don't mean the hypergate. Anyone with half a mind knows the theories about the old city being of, of GRI origin. Tree leaned in closer, glancing around. I mean what drives the hypergate. I don't understand, she said, but already she was thinking of what the masters had told her back on Tython, the dark matter. I mean there are whispers of design plans, tech details, tree shrugged, blueprints, and all agree. So if the rumors are to be believed, if the buzz around the underworld is to be believed, then Dale would is actually pretty close to having you know this, this hypergate built, which would mean the dark matter um, is either... In his hands, or close to his hands, or whatever. So we, we're having a we're pretty close to closer to, to uh, problems here than they might have thought. Um, <clears throat> he says, "I need to find somebody." Oh, we also find out about these um, people who are called stargazers, and you're not really supposed to mention the word out loud very much because it's kind of a um, a secret group. And the stargazers are people we'll find out who are wanting to reach beyond the stars. They're wanting to go back to their home worlds. They're wanting to get out of this closed little star system that they're having to stay in because they don't have the technology to, to leave. So they're called stargazers. And they tend to be not at least if, if not totally anti-force all the way, at least not of the Jedi mindset. They're not really willing to sit there and be under Jedi control and so forth, you know, because that would mean that they wouldn't be trying to look to get away. Mm -hmm. And tree says that there's a, um, there's an individual, a, star, a certain stargazer that he needs to meet with. It's kind of complicated. He's um, sort of an underworld person, but he has to, he has to go alone to meet with him. He has to go alone to meet with him. And I'll get back to you later, Lannery. Well, now what we know of Lannery's character right away, how she doesn't like to not know what's going on. She is more than happy to dip into people's minds and all that. You can tell right away she's not going to be okay with uh, just, just waiting in her ship while Tree goes to meet this person without her, you know? So yeah. <clears throat> That's the Rich Colomar guy, right? Yeah, yeah. Dealer in swing dust and other spices. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Uh, now we do but, finish. Uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, but you know, we were, we were talking about tree a little bit being, being manipulated, um, by the master. It, it kind of tweaks, um, Lannery a little bit because it brings to mind the little tweaking she's been doing yeah, with her container. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, yeah, a little close to home on that one. Yeah. She, she, well, we don't know what it is. She's tweaking yet. Right? Yeah. When she finds out that Dan Pal has, has experimented on tree to close him off like that. She said, that's not really ethical. We, people would frown on that, but then she said, but then the Jedi would <laughs> yeah. frown on my little experiment back on the ship too. So yeah. we still, we don't know what it is yet. Yeah. Um, so she's an interesting character. Now we also, in this chapter, which is our last chapter for the night, we finish out the, this portion of the flashback we find that uh, we followed her and Dale much younger when they made it to their first temple, they had to cross this desert sand because of the shifting of the sand. It absorbs all sound. So all sound is gone. This would be sound engravers nightmare. Um, <laughs> but you know, you can't even hear yourself walking. You can't hear yourself breathing. Everything is drowned out. You can't even speak to somebody. Obviously, you know, the sands just absorb all the sound and their temple that they're heading toward is in the middle of these, uh, these sands there and they finally make it in and they meet the Jedi master. Who's going to teach them combat and so forth. And, um, are you combat or is he teaching them? I forget what he's teaching them here first, but as he's going through and giving them a tour, <clears throat> he's using force telepathy to speak into their minds. Of course, only Lannery can hear him. Dale is either not able to hear him or won't hear him. And the teacher realizes that Dale is that closed off to the force. Lannery's trying to say, no, no, he'll be fine. He'll be fine. He'll try his best. You know, <laughs> like he can't mm -hmm. say somebody else will try his best, you know, if he's not saying it himself. So um, Dan, uh, the master even actually tries to touch his mind a little bit to communicate with him. And you see Dale's eyes get really large as soon as, you know, the master tries to touch him and he, you know, scoffs him away or whatever, you know, it, it doesn't have any part of it. So you, you kind of like where you know Dale is in the worst place he could possibly be going on a, yeah. a Jedi and, journey mission. 
and she keeps thinking, yeah, he's okay. Yeah, okay. No, he does. He'll be he fine. Feels he's it. fine. He's fine. fine. Yeah, he's, he, he feels it. And then, uh, no. <laughs> he's like, just kick it. He's like, I don't want to deal with this. Yeah. Yeah. We'll eventually hear from him. You know, it'll come to a head here. And it's kind of like, I, I, we've got the basis in these three chapters. I don't want to, I don't want to say and develop all the themes just yet without letting the book do it for us in the next you know few chapters or whatever but we do see the themes developing it's not about light versus dark it's about the force versus do we should the force be pushed on somebody you know we're so used to thinking about the star wars universe <clears throat> the force is just there you don't say no to it even if you're a person like han solo or something he's not anti-force he's just not force attuned and doesn't rely on it but you know, it's not like a like imagine a visceral imagine a situation in which the force was pushed on you or force waves were pushed on you, you know, and um you know that's an interesting concept because it 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 does violate some some liberty, some individual rights there to some degree. So uh so Dale is an interesting character. We're gonna continue yeah. to develop this. Because because he, yeah, I mean you're talking about he's having he's having it pushed on him. Like so we still don't know his degree of if he's a tune at all, I mean, he's just shutting it off, or if <laughs> yeah, he, he just doesn't has no skill at all in it. Nathaniel Zosma says, Lannery says, he just needs time, he's slow. Dale said, No means no. <laughs> <laughs> Stay out of my mind. <laughs> so, uh, so an interesting uh setup here, and we've got some cool places to go with this. Um we also need to find out what's going on with the dark matter, what's going on with the um, the Gree, who were they, and, and stuff. So it's we got you know it's a good setup. It's got some little bit of mysteries. We've got some good characters that we're following. Um, did you have any more to say about these chapters, Al? Uh, no, just an interesting start. Like I said, um, why? I mean, is there more to him trying to get this hyper gate up than just opening? A travel thing, or if he just we will see, or does he just want basically the universes to implode? <laughs> <laughs> we shall see. Um, I'm thinking for next time, let's read uh, four chapters so chapter four through six. No, no, that'd be three. Never mind. Um, let's see, what chapters would be. Through seven, basically. Yeah, and that would be in my book. Let's see. Yeah, that'd be a little over, like around 50 ish pages in my book. We could do that. What do you think? Or is that too much? You want to go back down sure. to three four chapters? Four chapters? Okay. Not, well, let me three. see. Though. You tell me. You call it. I'm trying to find the end of chapters. Okay, there it is. <clears throat> uh, give me, give me, give me, let's do uh, yeah. let's do we'll do one. three chapters. We'll do three chapters. All right, no, I mean, that's, I'm, no, I'm just <laughs> measuring where it's at here. <laughs> Making all kinds of noises. Man, it's still, it's still, it's still. Yeah, let's just do let's just do four through six then. Um, well, does it? No, I mean, no, 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 it comes to me. I'm fine. I'm fine. No, I'm, no. Like I said, I'm just concentrating on trying to find the end of the page. Yeah. No, we'll do three. Um, three. Because okay. you know, you never know how long. We'll be able to run with these writing night ones anyway. Then um, through chapter six, then. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> Daniel here. <laughs> I'm gonna. Don't worry. I'm opening the box now. He's messaging me on Facebook Messenger with like the uh, ah. the scene from the uh, seven at the end. He's like, open the box. What's in the box? <laughs> All right. I'm gonna go get the box and uh, and, and get ready to open this while Al talks about what's coming up for his channel and stuff. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, tomorrow night I'll be joining, uh, Troy and Nanette on Netter's Network. We're going to be watching Casper with Christina Ricci and Bill Pullman. Uh, looking forward to that. And then, uh, next Saturday on my channel, we will be watching the original Stargate with Kurt Russell and, uh, uh, James Spader. Uh, looking forward to that one. Haven't seen that one in a while. Look, look forward to diving back in, uh, jumping back through the gate. 
Uh, of course, I'll have more uh, 10-word reviews, which seems to me I'm still debating do I want to do it just 10-word review for, for Blue Beetle or should I do a little bit of a rant? Because I, I could go either way. Uh, I don't want to say all that much about it, but yeah, I'll figure it out. Uh, but uh, anyway, I, you know, I've already, I'm, I may, I may just go the ten the the ten word route. But uh, yeah, I don't I don't have any of you have seen Blue Beetle yet. Um, what else is going on? Of course, uh, coming up next month, gonna have Stephen King September. Gonna be watching Cat's Eye and Maximum Overdrive on my channel. And then for Halloween, I got got a couple of good films um, with um, Rocky Horror Picture Show and Captain Kronos, the Vampire Hunter. So looking forward to watching those with everybody. Uh, if you guys don't come on and do the rewatches, they're a lot of fun. Um, just watching it in the play really, really does up the entertainment value of even a bad film. We, had, we watched Reptilicus several weeks ago, and that was a lot of fun. We had six, pe six people watching that film on my channel and just had nice. a blast. Cool. All right. Well, I've got, uh, I've got the box. I also have my trusty Batman. Yeah. Yes, which uh, I know where you got that. Big Al sent me. Very cool. I, 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 I do want to say I know what it is. And it kind of sort of was my idea, uh -huh. but not not that he get it, but he asked for similar items to others, okay. and it, it it came to my head, it came to my brain. That is a slide. I got one too. So is yeah. Batman. Man. Pretty cool little like battering slash. Yeah, it's it's a nice knife. All right. Uh, <clears throat> this has gotten this weird picture. So thus far, Daniel for gifts is pretty good. He, he got me the the Ernest, the stuff, the um, the little Ernest doll before, which is that was just one of my prized possessions. It's it's right on one side of my TV. He got me a Steve Urkel doll, which is awesome, and then he got me uh, Pee Wee last year, which is an epic. So actually, Ernest and Pee Wee are on either side of my TV, and they have to stare at Sound Engraver every time she plays video games at my place. Yeah. <laughs> so she's like, Wait, "Do they have to be there right now?" Like, yes, they have to be there. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Whoa! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. It completes my my or continues my clown my clown uh, con uh, collection here. This is you guys recognize him? Do you guys know who he is? <clears throat> I'll give you a hint. I must say that was one of his catchphrases. So I am. Um, I am. I had no idea if you won. I knew he. I knew you probably knew who he was, but I didn't know what your opinion of him was. I loved. It. I mean, I love Martin. Yeah, Short. I'm so glad. So I'm taking full credit for this because yeah. I did mention <laughs> the name. So, not Alfalfa, Nathaniel's Lowe's ball. Uh, it's a Martin Short character named uh, um, Ed Grimley. Ed Grimley. He originated it on SCTV back in the day. It was on Saturday Night Live some, but they ended up doing a cartoon in the '80s. They made it a cartoon and. Um, when you know Pee Wee and Ernest and all that stuff was popular, so he had his own sort of, and he was uh, he's such a nerd. He plays like triangle. He's got like his pants hiked up, and he's usually uh, he has this weird stance he would always do, and his uh, his uh, catchphrase. I must say, I must say, I must say. I say. <laughs> he uh, also what I loved about his show was that in the middle of every cartoon, he would have to pause and listen to his favorite TV show, which was Count Floyd, <laughs> which was one of those like horror shows. With the horror host, <laughs> and then um, what's the guy's name who played Count Floyd? I can't remember. I'm sitting here trying to think of it. I could picture yeah. him though. But he would always open it with howling, and he would introduce a cartoon. He'd be like, "That's a scary cartoon." <laughs> it's great though. But Ed Grimley, so he's gonna go on my uh, my little wall of clowns there. Sounding Graver says, "Lasai." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> well, sorry. <laughs> This is Anna Griever can't be here right now because she's quarantined over there where she's been ill. But uh, <laughs> it's um, she, she'll it, this will stare right at her with uh, with Ernest and Pee Wee. Let's see if the string works. Ah, see, that's okay. That's good, Olinger. You know, that actually works better than the Pee Wee or Ernest. You can't expect much. They're made from the 80s, you know. Let me see it again. Ah, see, that's a pain that's gonna linger. I guess that's the only thing he says. That's a pain that's gonna linger. But yeah, you guys look up, look up Ed, uh, Martin Short, Ed Grimley. Great stuff. Uh, really great little funny sketches that he used to do. But the cartoon was wonderful. Cartoon was great. Um, cartoon Planet had Count Floyd. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. So yeah, I love this, Daniel. Thank you so much. Very much appreciated. And he got this for my birthday, by the way. It's, it's coming up here in September. So um, thank you so much, Daniel. This goes on my little clown collection. Love it. That's classic. That's great. Good stuff. Actually, I'm not going to put it in the box. I'm going to keep it out here. This is an interesting box, too, you got here. <laughs> I'll um, get Sound Engraver to come shake Ed's hand when she uh, comes, when she feels better. <laughs> I just yeah, love that, that super chat. Lasai. <laughs> yeah, it was uh, Joe Flaherty. Joe Flaherty, that's his name. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. actually played um, the priest on King of Queens. He played their priest once. Um, he's in a lot of little bit parts and stuff. He's a great, he's pretty funny. Ed Grimley is an excessively cowlick, voluble, hyperactive man child who is obsessed with banal popular culture, particularly Wheel of Fortune and mm -hmm. its host at Sage. Yeah, he had to watch that. What was uh, his cartoon's name? It was like the Mental Misadventures, the Completely Mental Misadventures of Ed Grimley. Yeah, that was the cartoon. Such great stuff. And I liked it because the cartoon, um, of course, Martin Short did, I think he did the voice for the cartoon too. But it uh, the opening show started with him live action, and he's going around getting things together in the cartoon world, you know, all the characters. And then at the end, he puts on like a cartoon suit of himself, you know. <laughs> and, mm -hmm. uh, it was cool, good stuff. All right, well, no, um, thank you again, Daniel. Appreciate that. Next week, um, next three chapters, so four through six of Dawn of the Jedi into the Void, and we'll keep uh, enveloping and developing this mystery, and we'll keep looking at the themes that are starting to be. Um, drawn out there by Tim LeBond. And uh, again, I like this book. Some Star Wars EU fans don't. I think they don't like, I, I, I think it's just a tragedy that it didn't have time to get more developed this era. I think that could have answered a lot of the questions and smoothed over a lot of the issues some people had with it. If they actually had time to develop it and bridge the gap between this era more and uh, in the Star Wars universe, we know old Republic and up and so forth. So, um, it's fun. It'll be interesting to see what you guys think. Any mm -hmm. closing words from you there, Al? Uh, no, just uh, had, had a fun time. I uh, always love starting a, starting a new book. And uh, it's, it's great to have everybody in the chat kind of reading along. And it's just nice to be together. Al. Huh? <laughs> this is fascinating. Riveting, Al. Well, I don't, well, it's, it's I don't nice. know. I, I, uh, I breathed in and, um, and you know, I, uh, I, you know, we breathe out and, you know, it's, uh, it's just a good time to, you know, um, um, breathe. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Al. <laughs> He's giving me the silent treatment now. So. That's fine. <laughs> We're going to take off now, guys. <laughs> I, I've made the Wookiee. I've upset the Wookiee. <laughs> um, come back next week. I'll be here with a live stream tomorrow. Al's got his rewatches. Until next time, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the true blue hero stories you love. Bye, everybody. <laughs>